Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton, and welcome to another EFC 24-7 news update. I'm going to be bringing you all the latest Everton news and transfer rumours as we head towards the Jan January transfer window. And the headline story today comes from Jeune Futur in France, and that is that Everton is supposedly interested in Arsenal's Nicolas Pepe, who's sort of been pushed to the fringes at Arsenal, despite you know getting a few goals here and there. We've been linked with him along with Newcastle and Crystal Palace. And, you know, I think Newcastle are going to be linked with literally everyone after the takeover and Palace have a lot more money to spend. The, the rumour is that we'd be looking to do a loan with a view to buy. Uh, and that is realistically the only way we could do it because we're in a financial mess at the moment. But um, a loan might be a possibility. Uh, there's no doubt that he's improved the team. But... Alone is the only way I can see there being any value in this, and even then, whether we, whether or not we make it permanent, would be value in the permanent deal. How much would the transfer fee be? Even in this case, there may be a loan fee. I'm not sure, given our financial predicament, that this would be the best move to really get us back in the black, if you like, from the situation we're in at the moment. I don't know if this is the best move. Anyway, yeah, uh, we on Twitter, the Toffee Blues, put this out to you guys in a poll. Uh, we asked whether you would sign Nicola Pepe or not. Uh, only 46.5% said that they would have him. So it's a very sort of close poll, this one. But the minority seem to agree with the idea of bringing Pepe in, even on a loan. And like I say, I think that's understandable, given that we almost certainly don't have the money long term to make this a make this a move. Certainly that. We certainly shouldn't be really looking to build a team around someone we bring in on loan, even though we'd probably be comfortably one of our best players as soon as he comes in the door. It's it's a weird one. I mean, you never know. We might we might need the cover regardless, given the injury crisis we seem to be endlessly going through this season. But I don't think it'd be good value. And even then, his Arsenal output hasn't been outstanding. So I'm not too sure about this one myself. Uh, next rumour will be a potential outgoing, and that is coming out of Turkey. Apparently, uh, Fnatic have said that Sivaspor, one of the teams in the Turkish Super League, have been in contact with Everton regarding bringing Salomon Rondon in on, I think it's a free a free transfer, I presume, given that we brought him in for free. And it's the January transfer window, of course. Rondon's only been here five minutes, but He's been very poor in his time here, let's be honest. He, he came in on deadline day. He's played, I think he's played about eight or nine games for us now, and not one of those has been a good performance. I think to get him out of the club as quickly as we got him in would probably be a good move at this stage. You know, we've got two more months until then, and, you know, we might get something out of him between now and then. You never know. But I think if we can even get a minor profit, that would be an absolute miracle. I think if we can we can manage that, that'll be excellent business for us, especially when we need like say to cut our cloth and save a bit of money, that would be a, a great bit of business to bring a player in for free and sell him on for a little profit in six months' time. I think no one would argue with that, especially given like I say how poor he's been. I think we'd be astonished if we ever made a profit. But if we can do that then I think we should, should certainly be entertaining that one. Uh another Another potential income, and that's another one that's been thrown around a lot in recent weeks, and that's Donny van der Beek, of course, who we was supposedly looking at him on the deadline day uh, in the summer. But, again, we've been linked alongside Newcastle, and I think Newcastle will be, like I say, thrown into the ring for literally any player that's remotely available in January for obvious reasons, but... On the ESPN, the 24-year-old midfielder is actively seeking to explore his options, is what they've said. And I don't know if we should be considering this because, you know, I think I, I made no bones about what his agent said regarding Everton as a step down from Man United. And yes, we all know it is, but for agents to be coming out with that pretty explicitly and stating that, I think that shows what he thinks of the club and a I don't think I'd want any of his clients signing for Everton. Also, Van der Beek's probably very lacking in match fitness. So, you know, I'm not sure if we could immediately see the types of performances that we'd be hoping to get out of, you know, a player who would be bringing in on loan from Man United. It's going to mean 
big wages regardless. So, you know, I don't, I don't know if this is the right move for us. I think there's definitely, again, like I say, same with the Pepe loan or the Pepe move. I think this would definitely be a poor value for money move. And, like I say, if Newcastle have got loads of money to throw around, I think they're a better place to throw it at him. Um, I think we should stay away from this one and, you know, look for something a bit more better value for money. You know, I think the town's ending grey moves in the summer. I think we're, we'll probably end up seeing a bit more of that. And to be honest, I'd be a lot, I'd be, I'd be very much behind us going for more deals of that ilk rather than, you know, players from Man United and Arsenal who bring with them big salaries. And, you know, we'll, we've seen plenty of players of that ilk come to Everton before and underwhelm. So I think some more under the radar transfers, some cheaper transfers than what Van der Beek and Pepe would be. I think that's definitely. The order of the day for Everton in the January window, but I do agree we need some reinforcements. That's for sure, because our injury look, injury look doesn't seem to be picking up at all, really. And on that note of injuries, uh, the injury case is even striking down potential Everton transfer targets because the Australian international Harry Sutar, who's been excellent for Stoke City in the Championship so far this season, has now. Uh, injured himself for the rest of the season. He's out with an anterior cruciate ligament injury and he picked that up while playing for Australia in the qualifiers against Saudi Arabia last week. That's now been confirmed that it's an injury to his cruciate ligament. He'll miss the entire season and, well, you know, it, it, it that pretty much rules out immediately us going in for him in January as was heavily linked in recent weeks. Uh, so yeah, it, it seems it turns out as soon as the name Everton's even associated with you remotely, you get injured at, the, at this stage. So you know we can't we can't buy our luck at the moment. It's, it's rotten luck. Even you know the transfer window, we do need to get some reinforcements in, and that's another one off our list. But um, I don't doubt that there'll be plenty more players being linked to us between now and the January window. Only a month and a half away, of course. So. Definitely loads to keep our eye on, and we'll be bringing more of that transfer news to you in that in the between now and January when hopefully we can get a few players in. Finally, of course, uh, away from the transfers, Everton, of course, have um. Uh, we, we, there's been a bit of, a bit of news in the last couple last day or two at least about Farhad Mashiri possibly moving the AGM to an online only capacity, which is. It's caused a little bit of a stare amongst the fan base, and understandably so. I think recently a lot has been said about the accountability of the club hierarchy to the you know the failures certainly of Everton uh, on and off the pitch recently, and you know, we want we want to see a bit more accountability. And I think the fact that the AGM, which is probably our best opportunity to maybe question the accountability of our senior staff at Everton and the fact that that's being sort of take that opportunity to sit there face to face and have that discussion is being taken away from shareholders is not a good look when there's been more outcry than ever for accountability and people to speak out and you know, let the fans and the shareholders alike know where they stand and it doesn't matter you know regardless of how much any anybody stakeholder, never mind shareholder, should be allowed to know where they stand in terms of their investments in terms of the shareholders. It's a financial investment in terms of the fans. It's an emotional investment. I think we all deserve to have a bit of a better idea of where we stand. I really don't think this is a good move by Farhad Mashiri to consider moving this over to an online only for the foreseeable future now for AGMs. I don't think that's a good move at all. Um, you know, I think if he knows what's going for him, he'll be looking to reverse that, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, but def definitely, uh, we need to see some improvement off the pitch as well as on the pitch, and hopefully there'll be some better news to come in the coming weeks. And on that note, of course, subscribe for more updates, uh, for more of these news updates, and as, of course, more content as the games come thick and fast as well. We're back into Premier League football this weekend, so, you know, definitely get tuned in. Uh, subscribe, give this video a like as well, and of course, let us know your opinions on all the news that I've covered in this video. Drop us a comment. And before you head off as well, don't forget to check out the new Toffee Blues store. 
The link's in the description below. We've got a brand new Christmas jumper. Toffee Blues Christmas jumper. Definitely get your hands on one of those. And, of course, check out the Everton Direct link as well for more Christmas shopping. As you know, you get all your, all your Christmas shopping done and run up to the holidays. So definitely check out those links. And, like I say, subscribe for more content. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching on the Toffee Blues.